And it is always my pleasure to uh, have Charles Davis stopping by. Been uh, working with Charles for a long time. I remember when the first time I saw Charles on TV way back in the day in Orlando. We're talking like, uh, what, what, what was that, Charles? What were the Sunshine Network days? Was that early 2000s? Yeah, we've been early 2000s. 2000 to what? 2000, 2002, 2003, something like that. Boy, we're going, we're going back now, the way back machine. We are. We're 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 up there. We're up there, my my man. You've been uh, you've been around as of I for quite some time. And I do have to say, I was thinking about you when I'm watching the draft, um, because I remember when not long ago there wasn't a single one of our Tennessee Vols drafted in an entire yeah. seven round draft. We had five Vols drafted in the first eighty picks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a lot more fun than having. Our mutual friend Daniel Jeremiah zing us because Appalachian State had more guys go <laughs> than us. So, luckily now he had to get off of us, and he turned his venom on Red Red Lewis the other day for Indiana. Two Appalachian State guys got drafted, none from Indiana. So Red's taking the beating now, and it feels a whole lot better. Oh, it always does. It always does. I was wondering. I know you're right back at work, by the way, on Path to the Draft for NFL Network. Do you get yeah, any time at up, all? Yeah. To decompress after the draft? Not yet. Not yet. I think um, after tonight, tonight's the last path to the draft. After tonight, things will start to ease out a little bit, even out a little bit. But, Dan, listen, you know, look, you've been doing this for a long time, been doing it quite successfully, quite well, and it is, you know, you're 24-7 on it, multiple sports going on, the whole deal, sitting in for Rich today, all that, right? And, yes, it can be grueling. It can be tiring. There's times when you just sit there and say to yourself, my goodness. But everyone that we know thinks that we are at the toy store or the candy store every day, right? To, to people we know, this is FAO Schwartz at its heyday. This is their favorite candy store in town. And the idea that we would complain about anything, they'd punch us dead in our face. <laughs> and I totally get it. And you get it, too. It doesn't mean that, that you haven't had to stay up until God knows what hour to put in the work or you had to catch a, a late flight after a show to get somewhere to do another show. Like all these things happen. These things are real. This, this is your life and you're preparing on the plane. You know, you're waking up early to prepare before the kids go. All of those things. Yeah, no take- one wants to hear it. No one cares. And when and and when truth when truth comes into it, and when this truth comes to shove, push comes to shove, we feel the same way. We're not complaining. We, uh, we we know how lucky we are. But there are days. Yeah, we get tired like anyone else. There's no doubt about it. I I have to share with the guys here in studio one of my favorite Charles Davis stories. It was early on, maybe the first or second year we were doing Titans preseason games together, and I'm yeah. always asking Charles if he wants to go out and grab a bite or grab a drink. And, you know, he's in Nashville. He has, he knows a bunch of people there. And, and Charles is usually very mellow and, uh, you know, hanging out, prepping for the game, you know, on his own. So more often than not, it's, it's a no. Yeah. I'm I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to be inside uh, getting prepping for the game. And, you know, here I am social butterfly. I want to go out and have a brew and, and chat a little bit. And uh, anyway, so I remember one morning I asked you, Charles, if you wanted to go grab some breakfast and you, you couldn't because you had to go meet a friend. And you were being yeah. a little initially a little obtuse about it. And I'm like, gosh, I don't know. He's going to meet a friend. I guess he doesn't want to tell me who it is. And then you share with me that it was one of your favorite authors. And yeah. <laughs> you were giddy like I would be if I was, was. going to meet like Halle Berry or yeah. uh, Clint Eastwood, yeah. or or Denzel. Mm-hmm. And, and right. this is what type of, uh, you are such a voracious reader and you read all the time, <laughs> that uh, this is leading to my, my question. I'm imagining when this is over and you do your last path to the draft today, do, are, yeah. you, are you just going to dive into a couple of books? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're so right about that. I was lucky enough. I mean, to me, authors are my rock stars. And there are a good number of them, and I could name a bunch. But that day, I was lucky enough, and then and, and, and Brad Thor, who, That's who right. I love, and every July Fourth, he puts out his new book, and I just love reading them. You know, his hero Scott Harvath, right? And Lisa Scottolini in Philadelphia, and there was another time we were together in Nashville, and I couldn't hang with you because I had read in the paper 
that Lisa Scottolini was going to be in Nashville for a book signing. And I'd never met her, but I read her stuff all the time. You know, you know what turned me on to her reading was Mike Mayock. Oh, is that right? He's a Philly guy. Yeah, yeah. Mike's, a, Mike's a Philly guy. So this is back when I was still on social media, and I kind of Twitter stalked her. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, as it turned out, she's a sports fan and a huge Eagles fan. So she was cool with the whole thing, right? So we had never met. And I rolled over to this deal, and she sees me before she starts her deal and comes over and says, hello, nice to meet you, the whole deal. And it was awesome, right? So I pick up the phone. <laughs> Mayock's doing a preseason game. I don't even know where he was. And I didn't even know it. And I pick up the phone, and I call, and he answers. And I go, hey, Mike. He goes, hey. Kick it off in 10 minutes, got a preseason game. What do you want? <laughs> I said, hey, Mike, you're not going to believe this. I'm at a book signing with Lisa Scottolini, and I just met her, and she is so cool. And he goes, you met Lisa Scottolini? Philadelphia's Lisa Scottolini, the one I turned you on to? Yes. I've never met Lisa Scottolini. Bleep you. It hangs up. <laughs> How Mayock is that? That's amazing. <laughs> is that not Mike Mayock? That is Mike Mayock to a T. Oh, my goodness. So, so yeah. And and just just to close the loop, I did sit and have some beers with you, even though I don't drink beer. But we did have drinks post-game. We did. Stuff like that. Occasionally, occasionally I came out of my little cave. (laughs) Well, I, I always in uh, I always enjoy those moments. Um, well, I, listen, I guess we do have to talk a little bit of draft. Um, yeah. I heard you guys talking about this on the show yesterday. Jim Irsay basically said he wants Anthony Richardson to play. Uh, we had yeah. uh, Jason Cole, NFL writer, uh, on a little bit earlier. And, you know, he's like, oh, I don't know how much he sees the field first year. Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. And I tend to agree with you. If the owner says he wants him to play, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> to see him out there for 17 games. Yeah, listen, you've been around the block a few times, right? It doesn't matter what profession you're in. When the person who's in charge speaks and you and you are smart enough to speak what they speak or, or at least parse what they've said, it's usually a good idea to listen. And when the man goes out in front of all of us and says, you know, you get better by playing, he goes, now Shane's going to, you know, Shane's going to have the plan to do whatever he wants, Shane Steichen, head coach, you know. But uh, I think that you get better by playing, and the more he <laughs> plays and he hasn't had a chance. He was telling his fans – these last six years when we've done rent a quarterback, we expected those quarterbacks to get us to the playoffs and give us a chance to go to the Super Bowl. That's what he would – because what he told us this time was patience. First time I ever heard him talk about patience. That means they are rebuilding. Okay, so he wants this young quarterback to play. He wants his team to grow with him. The whole deal, I'm not worried about getting to the playoffs next year. I'm not worried about any of that. He would punch me in my face right now himself because he'd be like, that's not what I'm saying. Yes, it is what he's saying. Yeah. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts. That's what you're saying. And that's cool as long as that's the plan for your team. That's the plan for your organization. Now you have to build around him, and you have to be there for him for all the tough moments because for every Troy Aikman who went through a horrific rookie season, as a starter, would they win one game, Dan, yeah. rookie year? Yep. And bounce back and become a Hall of Famer. How many others have we seen go through seasons like that and they are never the same? So they have to be very careful with this youngster. Sure, play him a lot, the whole deal, but check his confidence, check where he is, make sure that you don't lose him. Just think about the Titans last year. We were together when they pretty much forced that Malik Willis and made the number two quarterback. And by the end of the year when Ryan Tannehill was hurt, they signed Josh Dobbs from our alma mater, Tennessee, Mm -hmm. off the street, started him on a Thursday night game against the Cowboys, and then started him in the biggest game of the year that would determine their playoff fate rather than the guy that they had drafted. What do you think they've had to do this offseason in terms of talking to Malik Willis? Yeah. I mean, that's hard to bounce back from, okay? I don't care who you are. So those are the, that's the only thing I think about with Anthony Richardson, Dan, is that for this organization, okay, you want to play him, that's cool. But he's had 13 starts. If it goes poorly, what's the support system? How do you keep his confidence going and, and, and allow him to 
ascend at possibly a later date. Now, who knows? He may come in and light it up and, and, and everything goes just great. Who knows? Right. But that's kind of what I'm worried about a little bit with him, only because we've seen it happen many times before with some really talented quarterbacks. Well, and even though the talent is is obvious, the experience yeah. or lack thereof is is obvious as well uh, with him. Trey Lance, the only guy with fewer uh, college throws, um, according to Jason Cole, uh, than yeah. Richardson coming into the NFL. Let me ask you about the other quarterback that ends up uh, in Nashville with the Titans. What a wild ride that was from the Reddit post from a friend of a friend or yeah. whoever that was that changed the odds yeah. of Levis being potentially picked number one overall. And then we're seeing him, you know, in the green room, the entire draft, the slide happening, doesn't get picked on the first day, ends up in Nashville uh, with the Titans. Was that one of the bigger surprises for you? I mean, we see the slides every year, right? But the fact that it was yeah. Levis and the fact that it was all the way out of the first round. Made me wonder, Dan, about just how much because, you know, you and I straddle the media slash evaluation side, right? So, in other words, we are media. You know, I always love when we work with people who go, you know, I, I, you know I'm really not media. Yeah, yeah, you are because <laughs> you're doing it, right? <laughs> I mean, how many times do we do it, especially with, you know, ex-coaches who come over to our side? Oh, yeah. I'm really not media. Uh, Coach, I'm not a break this to you. Yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> But we're also evaluating these kids and how much of that did I miss in terms of the true evaluation of Will Levis versus the media hype that went with it, it, what we were talking about with him to elevate him to where on mock drafts, it was not outlandish to see him go number two to Houston. You know, it was not outlandish to see him go four to Indianapolis. I had him going 12 to Houston in my final mock draft. So, did I miss something? Did I misevaluate? Did I do, you know, who knows with all that? So, yeah, it was a, it was a slide for him. It kind of reminded me of Brady Quinn, unfortunately. You know, when Brady didn't go in nine to Miami and the slide started. Right. But I remember that year the commissioner went and got Brady Quinn and took him out of the green room and put him back behind closed doors because we were showing him every other second. And that was one of the coolest things I had seen, the compassion by the commissioner get him out of the firing line. And by the way, Brady went 22 to Cleveland. But I'll never forget him coming out and just not seeing joy, but you're just seeing relief and anguish. Yeah. You know, to go number 22 in the draft. That didn't happen for Will Levis. He had to sit there and eat it. You know, right? He had to sit there and own it the entire time. Why didn't somebody come rescue him, Charles? The next day when he was at home. Huh? I, I said, why didn't the commissioner come rescue Will Levis? Yeah, I I, I can't answer that one. <laughs> I, I kind of thought it might happen. Right. But it did not. But just, you know, and then, of course, he went home, and then the next day it was a short deal, and maybe they give him a little extra fuel and the whole deal. But it also told us about evaluations, too, because he, nor Hendon Hooker, who also was popularly mocked to possibly get into the first round, neither one of them went – and then the next day, Will Levis came off board early and Hendon Hooker didn't come off board to the third round. So the evaluations and where people had them, they had Will Levis ahead of Hendon Hooker. Which surprised and there was a lot of conversation by yeah. many of us, me included, that had Hooker ahead of Will Levis. That, that did surprise me a little bit. I know you have a show to get ready for, so getaway question here. Uh, you've watched so much tape, did so much studying – a player that might be somewhat under the radar. I'm not talking super sleeper, but you know, not a first round guy. A player that you just kind of fell in love with and you think could have an immediate impact wherever he lands. I'm gonna give you one a defensive tackle out of Boise State named Scott Matlock. Okay. Chargers took him in the sixth round. And what have the Chargers had trouble doing over the last couple of years, Dan? Stopping people running the football. Oh, a lot. Okay. So I think that he's gonna get a chance to get into rotation and be one of those guys. I'm not saying he comes out and he's an all pro or even a pro bowl or what have you, but would not surprise me if he becomes like a great Gaines type. Remember great Gaines mm -hmm. coming out. They talk about his short arms and this, that and everything. Heck, he played pretty well for the Rams and now he's moved on and he's a valued member in the NFL. I wonder if Scott Matlock can be that kind of guy. Plus always like when a defensive tackle shows up on you know, extra point field goal and goes out and catches a two point pass for, for, for a conversion. 
Oh, heck yeah. He athletic ability to him. I love it. I love it. Well, you brought up another one that I really liked yesterday on the show, and uh, Rasheed Rice out of SMU. Yeah. I think he could do some things in Kansas City. Charles, Agreed. always, you are you are one of those guys who I've worked with who always makes me better. Just wanted to say thank you. Always appreciate the time. And hopefully you get some time. Uh, I know it's the job, but I know it's a grind yeah. too, and, and you deserve a few days to uh, just read a few books and chill out down there in Orlando, my friend. Yeah, and try and keep these authors from, from, from having the cops come get me for talking <laughs> them, that's for sure. But, Dan, those are very kind words. I appreciate it. Trust me, it's right back at you. It's a mutual deal. You make me better, and it's just a blast to be around you. So all the best. Keep knocking them dead, and keep keep holding it down for Rich there. Thanks, man. Say hi to all the boys for me, DJ and Rhett and all those guys, and Bucky, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. All right, look forward to it. All the best to you and your crew. Be okay. good. Thank you. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.